Hey guys, welcome to Teal House Farm. A um, little bit of an unexpected day today. I'm standing at the door here, waiting for Annie, the school bus, to come bring her back because she goes uh, two days a week. She goes to school just for a couple hours in the morning to get her therapies in um, through the school system, and so I'm waiting for her to come back. But we lost power today, like randomly. It's not bad weather. It rained a little bit last night, but it's not bad weather right now. It's not windy or anything. It just went off. And I've reported the outage and I've tried to call, but nobody picked up. So I'm not really sure what's going on, but it's been off for almost an hour now. And uh, we're just kind of going to see what's going on. Hi. Say hi. Go eat, go finish your lunch. No. Nope. Yep. No, nope, no. Nope. So the plan is we're going to go visit a friend for a little bit. And then we have to go to church. I'm supposed to cook dinner for everybody at church tonight. Um, hopefully the power is on there. That'd be a little bit interesting. Um, and then if the power is not back on by the time we get home, we're going to try to fire up. We have an inverter, which you can use your car to actually power your house. So we're going to try to hook that up and power it up for a little bit. And that way we can at least get our freezer charged back up and back cold if we haven't figured out why we don't have power. Power is out. Panic. <laughs> Mikey does not like this power out, especially because it's dark today because it's cloudy. No, no, and so it. our house is... Really? It's just really dark, and she doesn't like not knowing when it's going to come back. It right? doesn't look that dark because cameras have really good vision. Yeah, my camera's not actually that great, so the video's probably not that great because it is just really dark everywhere. It's not that The biggest problem is that we only have a limited amount of water in the pressure tank, you know, sitting. We can use up that water, but once it's done, there's no... Okay, just a second. There's no way to drag water back up from the well. Um, unless we hook up our simple pump, which is a big project, which I'm not going to do. Um, and so you only, like, you basically got a couple toilet flushes available to you. So I'm trying to tell the girls, if you have to go potty, do not flush it because, uh, we don't want to use up, we need to save the water in the pressure tank for drinking water right now, just because we don't know how long the power is going to be out. And I don't want to have to break out any of our extreme prepper measures for something silly if there's just like a wire down somewhere and they're going to fix it in the next couple of hours. <laughs> Do you want me to help you in the bathroom? Is it too dark in there? Okay. Alright, you guys stand in there. JJ, go potty. <laughs> Okay, we're back. This is actually a couple of days later. So the power turned back on about four hours after it went off. Turned out like um, a tree limb had fallen somewhere down the line um, on a tree or on the on the line and then that was it. Like the power was out and I had to wait for somebody to come fix it. Um, but what I think, this got me thinking. So we have preps for like if there were to be a major emergency because where we live, there's a lot of flooding in the spring and we just never know how bad it's going to be. And the concern being like, are we going to be able to get out? Are we going to be stuck at home? You know, if the power went out, like, what would we do? So we have things, you know. You guys know we got the wood stove. I can cook on that, and it provides heat, so we wouldn't be cold. Um, if it was a cold time of year where we lost power for a long period of time, we have, like I said, an inverter, which allows you to use your car to power something like our freezer to keep frozen stuff frozen, or like our fridge just to for a few days if we needed to just like stretch it out so we don't lose everything. And we also have a gener like a regular generator. It's not, you know, we're not going to be powering the whole house. I know you watch some of these off grid or these larger homesteading channels and they have massive generators. They can like plug their whole house in. 
that's not what we got. But we could keep essential things going for a few days if we needed to. Um, and the same with our well, our well pump. We do have a manual pump that we can install if we ever needed to, to be able to bring water up manually. But the issue is those things are all big things and you don't really want to put the effort into those, bringing out those big things unless you know you're going to need them for an elongated period of time. Otherwise you just kind of make do. But then the water becomes an issue like we had today with six kids in the house and basically all the water that you get is going to be what's left in the pre in the pressure tank, which I think is a 50 gallon tank. Um, Sam just yelled at me from the other room and said it's 30, 30 gallons. So that's all the water that we would have. Whatever is in the pressure tank can still um, be sucked up into the house and used, which with, with six kids and two adults, it actually goes pretty fast. Um, so you have to be really careful um, with your water. So I was thinking, how can I have more water on hand? The biggest issue really for us, you know, um, is like being able to flush the toilet and being able to like keep our hands clean and maybe boil some water for food. Um, though our, we're pretty good about keeping our Berkey full and having like drinking water ready that way. Um, and so I was doing some reading, I'll link it below, and, and um, I wanted to find legitimate sources. So I didn't just want somebody's blog who said, hey, this is what I do. So this is a government-sponsored source. This has been tested about how to safely store potable water in milk jugs or in like soda two liters. And so I think I'm going to store one day's worth for now. Um, and so the recommendation is like one gallon per day per person in your family. So I'll need to store eight gallons of water. I, the biggest reason I'm not storing more, because I think it'd be smarter to have two or three days worth, is I just don't have anywhere to put it. I'm going to hide these in the tiny little linen closet in the bathroom, just on the bottom of it. I think I could fit five or six in there. So that's what we're going to do. But that way we have extra water. Biggest issue would be keeping the toilet flushable because I don't want to have to bring in the composting potty unless we really need it for the long term because it's uh, it just gets messy with kids. That's all I'm going to say about that. We've had one inside before and it was it was fine. It did not smell, but the kids think the wood chips are cool. The little guys, it takes a lot of training to keep them out of it. So if we can keep life as normal as possible in situations like this, when we lose power for three or four hours, which happens out here because, you know, who knows where the issue is and how long it's going to take the company to send somebody down, a line man to fix it. So we need to be able to keep the toilet flushing and especially keeping our hands washed. So what we're gonna do is we're going to rinse out the gallon jugs with hot soapy water. And then we're going to um, fill them up again uh, with some water from the tap. And we're just gonna put a little bit of bleach in it. I'm gonna let them sit for 15 minutes. This will help sanitize the jugs. And I'm gonna let them dry overnight. And then I'm going to refill them with distilled or sterilized, I think is the term that the pamphlet says, water, which is water I'm going to have boiled on the stove and cooled down so that we know that is perfectly safe. Since we're not on municipal water, we have well water, there could be bacteria in it. We don't want that breeding in the container, so we're going to boil the water first. Mommy, can I have another dessert? You sure can. Go for it, JJ. Good job with your plate. Um, and so, and then we'll have these just for these types of emergencies where we lose electricity for that short period of time and we just need to kind of stretch normal life over. And if we get in a situation with really bad weather or something where we're going to lose electricity long term for days, we can pull out our big systems and get things going for that. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope it gives you some ideas. Link below on how to do this safely and we'll see you guys later. Bye.